In today's video, we're talking Lightroom preferences, so let's get into the video. Now that we got going in Lightroom, we have some photos imported into the program, we need to talk about the preferences a little bit. There's some things in there that we may want to select or maybe you don't want to select, but I wanted to run through them real quick, give you a quick overview and let you decide on how you want to set up your preferences for Lightroom. So let's get over into Lightroom and get started. So here we are in Lightroom and I'm going to show you just a few quick preferences that I use that I select and uh, let you kind of decide how you want to set your Lightroom up. So to get the preferences, we come up to Lightroom in the top menu bar here, come down to preferences, start out in the general tab here. One of the things I do check is automatically check for updates. I want to make sure Lightroom is always up to date under default catalog. When starting up, use this catalog and I always select load the most recent catalog. I generally work in one catalog, but if I am in a different catalog for some reason, I want to make sure whatever catalog I last used is the one that loads up under import options. I generally have have show import dialog when memory card is detected. I select that and that way when I plug in my memory card, it'll automatically pop up right here in Lightroom. The rest of these, I pretty much leave them as they were when I installed the program. Under presets, this is where you're gonna be able to find where your presets are. If you need to add new presets, maybe you downloaded some presets from somewhere online, you come down here and show develop presets and by clicking that, that's gonna show you where your develop presets are stored on your machine. And if you wanna know where all your other presets in Lightroom, such as your prints or your import presets, metadata presets, all those things are stored right under here, show all other Lightroom presets. And you click on that and that'll bring you right to the folder where all those are stored. Under Lightroom defaults, if things get a little out of whack or get a little messed up, you can restore to how they originally were when the program was installed. Coming over to the external editing tab, when you're gonna edit your photos in Photoshop, for example, there are several options that Lightroom can select when it's gonna send your photo over to Photoshop. You can select different file formats, color space, bit depth, and resolutions. I usually go with a PSD file, I use Adobe RGB, or you can use Pro Photo RGB, that'll give you more colors. I just stick with the Adobe RGB, it seems to work out okay for me. Bit depth, I use eight bits because I find that the files are just a little bit smaller and resolution, I use 300. So if you have a program other than Photoshop that you like to edit your photos in, uh, for example, I have some of the on one programs, you can select your options down here for that program. Allow Lightroom to apply those settings as it exports to whatever program you might want to use. You can stack it with your originals once the photo comes back into Lightroom. However, I don't do that. I just let it go back into the same folder as the original file, so I don't really worry about stacking them. When Lightroom exports your file, you might want a way to tell that it's different than your original file. So under custom settings here, I've created a file naming template where I basically just add edit at the end of the file name. So here you can see I use the original file name and then just dash edit. And that way I know which photos have been edited in an external program. The next tab is file handling, extension format. This is just the way it looks. I use the little DNG, compatibility. I always wanna make sure I have the latest version selected here. JPEG preview, I use medium size just because I find that it's not too big. It doesn't bog things down too much. So medium size works out well. Embed fast load data. I'm gonna select that so that images load as quickly as possible. Everything else I'm gonna leave as is. Next comes the interface. Here in the panels, it gives you some options of putting little flourishes or whatever you know, little decorations at the bottom of your panels. Font size, you can pick if you need bigger font or smaller font. When you use the lights out mode in Lightroom, you can also select the different colors for the background. I just do black by default. And then you can also select the dim level of how much the lights dim when you use that. The background, you can select your color. I use dark gray, cause that's what I like. If you have a secondary window, you can also select the color for that. With your keywords, I separate them using commas. You can leave this option checked if you'd like. In the film strip, you can see the options that I have checked here. I pretty much check all of them except for ignore clicks on badges. Under tweaks, I just left these at the default settings. Coming over to the performance tab, if you can use the graphics processor, I would recommend that you go ahead and use that. Coming under camera raw cache settings, you can set a maximum size that those files would take up. And you can also do the same for video. I've picked 30 gigs for photos and 20 gigs for video. I guess you can pick whatever you want. And if you ever notice that Lightroom is running a little sluggish, I come in here and I'll click purge the cache every once in a while just to make sure everything gets cleaned out and nothing's kind of getting bogged down and backed up. Under develop, I leave the first one checked, which I believe is default. So under catalog settings here, you have a whole nother set of settings for your catalog, which we'll go over in another video. But one of the important things here is optimize catalog. So if you notice that your Lightroom catalog is running a little slow and sluggish, you've tried purging these two things up here, 
here, you can optimize the catalog and that kind of just cleans it up and helps it run a little bit smoother. You know, every once in a while, things need to be tidied up a little bit. So optimize catalog helps get that done quick. Moving over to Lightroom Sync. This is where you log in to sync your photos to Lightroom Mobile, assuming you have a Lightroom Cloud subscription. And this is where you're going to be able to do that. Options prevent sleep during sync. So when I'm syncing photos, I don't want the computer to go to sleep. Leave that checked. The next down here, we have location. And when you're syncing photos with Lightroom Mobile, let's say, for example, you use Lightroom Mobile to take a few pictures and you use the Lightroom app on your phone. When it comes back to your computer, you can specify where you want to put those images. Coming over to network, I don't use this tab. I just leave it blank and don't worry about that. So there you go. There's a quick overview of the Lightroom preferences panel and how I have some of my settings set up. And uh, hopefully you can get your setup pretty good so that as we bring more photos into Lightroom and we get going more in Lightroom, you're all set up and everything's going to work good, smoothly, and you have your preferences all squared away. So I want to thank you for stopping by and checking out this video. If you're into photography, Photoshop, Lightroom, and even a little bit of video and video editing, consider subscribing to my channel. And I'll see you in the next video.